You want a Maserati? You want a hot body? Better work, bitch. What is up and welcome back for another video. Thank you for clicking and let's get started. Right now I'm sitting down to listen to Britney Jean. I just wanna say I think it's really interesting that she already had a self-titled album and now this is kind of another self-titled album but they just tacked her middle name onto it. Just seems kind of unusual. I'm wondering if there's a story there. Could they not come up with a name for the album or... But anyways, I'm pretty interested to hear this one. I feel like there are some very uh, mixed opinions out there about this one, so I'm semi-concerned about it. <laughs> but without further ado, let's get into it. This album has 14 tracks, and out of those 14 tracks, I already know five. Work Bitch, Body Ache, Till It's Gone, Chillin' With You, and Brightest Morning Star. The rest of the songs will be brand new to me. This is my reaction for Britney Jean by Britney Spears, and we're going to get started right now. Track number one, Alien. I like that little noise in the back. Aww. What a somber note to start off on. <laughs> Oh wow, we just got started and she's already upset. I can relate to this. Not so much about feeling alone, but I also romanticized the idea about drifting off in space. Like just launch me into the void and let's see what happens. I'm very obsessed with outer space. I can't even tell you how often I just sit around contemplating the concept of outer space. The stars, the moon, the other planets, whatever the f else is out there. The undiscovered things in outer space and the undiscovered things at the very, very bottom of the ocean live in my head rent-free. Okay, alien. I like the idea that she's with somebody that makes her no longer feel alone. Because what does she say in the beginning? There was a time I was one of a kind, lost in the world, out of me, myself, and I was lonely then like an alien. I mean, you know what they say, it's lonely at the top. I'm sure she probably felt lonely a lot of times in her career. It's funny because there's actually a song called Homesick by Madison Beer which is pretty much the same concept of this song. If you haven't heard it, you should go listen to it. But yeah, it's interesting that they chose to open the album like this. Usually the album openers are pretty hype, so this is a little bit different. All right, this is track number two, Work Bitch. All right, that was work, bitch. You know what? It's funny because I really do consider this one of my least favorite Britney singles. I know, I'm so sorry if this is, if you love this one. But what I was gonna say is, even though I consider it like a song that I don't really love, when that beat comes on, that entire opinion is going in the trash. You just can't not dance to this beat. Like they put crack in this beat for sure. It goes way too hard. And even though it's really not one of my favorite Britney songs, if this comes on in any bar or club setting, it's game over. It's one of those songs that it comes on you're like, oh, this song, okay, whatever. And then by the end, you're like rolling around on the floor. That's this song. All right, this is track number three, Perfume. Oh, I love a piano. The scandal of it all, ma'am. Okay, wait, so she is in a relationship with this man, but she thinks that he's cheating? Girl, this is a mess. Okay, sonically, loving it. The storyline, a complete disaster. I love the piano so much. Oh, one, two, three. Wow, 
wow, the melody in this chorus is kind of going off, yeah? Dang, okay, I really, really love the clarity of the voice. If you've watched my other videos, you've probably picked up on this by now, but if there's one thing that I can't stand, it's when the production is too loud and you can't hear the voice very clearly. I wanna hear the voice, I wanna hear the vocals. Her voice sounds pretty deep here compared to the last few albums. I'm into it. Concept of the song, she's a bit controversial. I mean, do what you gotta do. I don't really play games like that. If I think someone's cheating on me, I'm confronting your ass. But however you wanna handle your business, that's your business. I do see at the end of the album, there's a different version of this song called The Dreaming Mix, um, which I'm very excited to hear now. I really, really like this one. All right, this is track number four. It should be easy featuring Will I Am. Not a robot song. Not a million billion. True. You have a point. Oh. Well, the beat's going crazy. I personally am not a huge fan of like vocal effects unless they're just used, you know, like a little bit here and there. This is like an over the top auto-tune, it sounds like she's like underwater. Like, swim to the surface, girl, we can't understand you. Other than that, I'm into it. Okay, that was It Should Be Easy. Definitely a club banger. Very much along the same lines as Work Bitch. This one feels very light and fun and carefree. Whole album is very electronic so far, very EDM. Kind of feeling like the sequel to Femme Fatale, which is honestly what I was expecting considering the songs that I knew before. Really love the beat on this one. All right, this is track number five, Tick Tick Boom featuring T.I. Okay, so another heavily electronic club-ish song. Let me keep listening. I, I have an opinion. <laughs> I have a thought, but let me hear the rest of it. Forgot he was on this song. Okay, that was Tick Tick Boom <laughs> with T.I. Um, okay, here's what I'm gonna say. When it comes to these more club sounding songs, my only issue with them is that, that it kind of feels like they fully planned on the beat and the production carrying the song. Because lyrically, they tend to be a bit repetitive and melodically, they tend to be kind of plain Jane, I guess. It feels like they felt like if the beat was top tier, that everything else could kind of just be passable. There's nothing wrong with the song and it's not bad, but it's like clearly the most exciting part about the song is the beat. I don't know, does that make sense? I'm not trying to knock the writing cause God knows I couldn't write a better song than this, <laughs> but it feels like they put all of their stock into the production and the rest of it just kind of exists. All right, this is track number six, Body Ache. I already know this one, but let's hear it. You want a hot body? <laughs> I forgot how crazy this beat goes. All right, that was Body Ache. The beat drop is pretty crazy. This is some top tier production, I'm not gonna lie. This song and the next song, Till It's Gone, are two of my absolute favorite songs to work out to. That's how I know them. <laughs> I found them on workout playlists. But speaking of which, this next track is called Till It's Gone. Let's hear it. Like that chorus just goes so hard. I have gotten some of the best runner's highs of my life <laughs> on the treadmill to this song. Try it sometime, I swear, it really does the trick. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 
All right, that was Till It's Gone. I honestly really, really love this song. Uh, this, I mean, this production just, it's so sick. Complete banger. This song deserves a lot more attention in my opinion. It's a little bit slept on. I don't appreciate it. This one to me is very clearly the best out of all of the like club songs. There's so much more to it, lyrically and melodically. There's so much more meat in the song as opposed to just beat in the song. You know what I'm saying? All right, this is track number eight, Passenger. Where are we going? A guitar? Aw, cute. I'm obsessed with the guitar. Oh, come on, guitar. So far in the album, there seems to be two types of songs. Club banger songs that are meant to just get you moving, such as Body Ache, Until It's Gone. And then there seems to be songs that sound like this, like the alien and the perfumes of the project. I like that we're kind of going back and forth and getting different vibes. Passenger. The sound of this song is really fascinating to me. Something about it feels very comforting. I think it feels kind of nostalgic a little bit, certain elements of it. I like the concept of it, it's super sweet. I think if I ever feel this way in a relationship, that's when I'll know. Oh, I found the one. Control freaks, raise your hand. Yeah, the concept of sitting back and letting someone else take the wheel, it's not really in my nature. So if I feel that for somebody, that's probably a good sign. Like I was saying, there's two types of songs on this album. I think I prefer these ones, the ones that have a little bit more of a meaning to them and a little bit more of a laid back sound. All right, we're moving on to track number nine. This is Chillin' With You. <laughs> this is Chillin' With You featuring Jamie Lynn. I already know it, but let's hear it. That was chilling with you. <laughs> I'm not even gonna beat her on the bush with this one. I, I hate this song. I think it's absolutely terrible. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. If anyone, if you're out there and you really like this song, that's okay, that's okay. Agree to disagree. I just think that this song is absolutely the worst. Half of it doesn't rhyme. The production makes zero sense. I don't know, throw the whole thing away. In my mind, this song does not exist. Control, alt, delete. People also seem to have a lot of opinions right now about Miss Jamie Lynn, something that I'm not going to get into or comment on because I'm not quite sure what's going on there. All of that to say, this one is not for me. Moving on. This is track number 10, Don't Cry. Are we going Western? You know what? I was actually not expecting to get a breakup song on this album. Oh, I almost just played Chillin' With You again. No. <laughs> Sounds like a very mature handling of the situation though. So we always like that. Quite a gear shift from that mess that was going on in Perfume. Another really interesting production. Okay, but she does say she lost trust, so... So that gives me reason to believe that he was the problem. Of course, men are always the problem. Adios, Adios mother... Okay, that was Don't Cry. Yeah, I did like this one. I specifically like the production on the chorus, but the production in general is very interesting. When it comes to these songs on the album, like the more meaningful ones, there are some very interesting choices being made. It's not quite what you would expect, but I think that that's partly why I like it. Love a little bit of a surprise, a little bit of a 
spice in there. Definitely a mature breakup song. You know, sometimes the love is just no longer there and two people can just go their separate ways and that's the end of the story. No bad blood, no animosity. It's all good, but it's over. Adios. All right, this is track number 11, Brightest Morning Star. Actually really, really love this song, but I haven't heard it in a really long time. So let's listen. Thank you. All right, that was Brightest Morning Star. I still really love this one. It just feels so comforting, so warm. I also think that there's something about this song that feels true to Britney's past eras. And I feel like that's what drew me to it so much in the first place. Like it almost sounds like a song that would fit on Circus or like an older album. I mean, if you dislike this song, please take a second right now to make sure you still have a pulse, you heartless son of a bitch. All right, this is track number 12, Hold On Tight. Wicked. Such a good musical. Don't do it, Brittany. Don't go back to him. I don't know why. I don't know what he did. If you're looking for a sign to stay away from a toxic man, this is it. Don't text him back. <laughs> Oh, that's a worst. All right, that was Hold On Tight. It's literally so unfair how people can do you wrong and you can still be attracted to them. Like, what a scam. Like, there needs to be some sort of internal system that deletes those feelings when they are no longer needed and or when they become harmful to your mental health, to your inner peace. Like, I hate this man, but I'm still attracted to him. What a ripoff. Hold On Tight is interesting because it actually just feels like the flip side of Brightest Morning Star, like the anti-Brightest Morning Star, like the angel and the devil that sit on your shoulder. One of them's like, I love him so much. And one of them's like, he sucks. So it's kind of interesting to me that they put them next to each other in the album. It's not one of my absolute favorites. It's probably in the middle for me. All right, this is track number 13, and Now That I Found You. Why does this sound like a Coldplay song? Okay, to be completely honest, I think that I wish that there wasn't a beat drop. I really like the simpler production that we have going on in the verses, but let's keep listening. All right, that was Now That I Found You. This one's interesting because I like the beat and I like the song, but not together. I'm not mad at the Yeehaw Square Dance beat. I just don't know if this was the time. Thankfully, they did teach us how to square dance in elementary school, so I'm prepared for this one. <laughs> why was that a thing? Someone please explain to me why my Midwest elementary school had us square dancing in gym class. I will await your explanation because I do have questions. Anyway, now that I found you, it's cute. I'm assuming it's a deluxe track, so I'm gonna just take it for what it is. All right, this is track number 14, the last track on this album, Perfume, The Dreaming Mix. I'm actually very excited to hear this one. Mmm, 
All right, that was Perfume, the Dreaming Mix. Let me start by saying I really like both versions of this song. It's funny because without even seeing that there was a Dreaming Mix, I definitely would have described the original version of this song as being kind of dreamy. So I like this version because it kind of highlights those elements, but I definitely really like both versions. I think I would have to hear them both again in order to decide which one I prefer. But either way, this is probably one of my favorite songs on the album. So I'm happy that this is the one they chose to give a remix for. All right, and that some way somehow already brings us to the end of this album. They went by fast, I felt like. Overall, a very interesting project, that's for sure. I'm very, very interested to hear what everyone else thinks about it. It kind of feels like you're either gonna love it or hate it. I think that there are some really, really solid songs on the album. I think the artistry gets a little bit lost for me. I think that if this was the first Britney Spears album that I had ever heard in my life, I wouldn't really have a good sense of who she is as an artist by the end of it. And that would be my issue with it. I wouldn't say it's a bad project. Definitely not my favorite Britney album, but there are some songs that I really liked. So let's get to this ranking. I'm gonna slide a ranking of the album right over here for you. So you can see how I felt about everything after my first initial listen. As always, please drop your every and any thought in the comment section below. I wanna know what you thought about these songs, what you think about this album. I kind of feel like whether you love the album or you hate the album, you could still agree that this was a really interesting point in her career. There's something about it that doesn't fully translate or doesn't fully connect after the first listen for me. But some of these songs really slap. Don't lie to yourself. All right, and that's just about gonna wrap it up for this video. As always, I would like to thank you so much for watching. Please take care of yourself and I will see you next time.